Welcome to the I Am Church in Jacksonville, Senior Pastor Anthony Mincy. We are a local church with a global impact, where the people of God learn their identity in Christ. We pray that our services will be a blessing to you and your family. Now, let's join the I Am Church worship service. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. We thank God for tonight. Thank him for this night for fresh fire revival amen we've been going on praise god all month last month we're going on this month and you all be praying for us because i feel a, a fire burning a fire burning throughout the florida throughout the united states of america throughout the world i can think back to the 70s when I got saved I remember the saints used to be they used to always talk that God was sending revival there would be an end time revival and I believe I, I really believe in my spirit that we are there this is a time for a great gathering you know before a great gathering there's a great scattering and I don't know if you all have been watching the posts of not only the church, but the world. The world was scattered in 2020 and yet scattered now. But I see a gathering. I see a coming together. So grateful to have my son here. Amen. Amen. Anthony number two, Anthony Jr. Amen. Aunt. Amen. My boy. Amen. Glad to have him in our midst tonight. But most importantly, we are grateful that the Holy Spirit is in here. We didn't invite him in the room. He invited us in the room. He invited us to come in his presence. And while we're here, amen, let's just do the norm. Let's come on, clap your hands and give God some praise. Come on, give him praise, give him praise. Come on, come on, come on. Now you can do better than that. You can do better than that. I believe you can do better than that. I believe we got some sports fans out there. If your favorite team was coming up here, amen, we just left March Madness. I believe somebody was rooting doing March Madness. I believe you saw your team. I, I believe, amen, I saw some teams do some stuff, amen, and I was, I was rooting right there with them. Praise God. But I'm going to just, I'm going to invite my son to come up. Amen. It, it, there's no need in me trying to do no singing at all with this sensational voice in our midst. I would really hurt myself if I would sing any songs with my son sitting out there. Amen. I'm so grateful uh, for him for coming out to be with us tonight. Amen. I won't say anything about our speaker yet, but I will have some things to say about him as well. Come on, son. Come on, clap your hands. Thank God for it. My son. <laughs> Anybody happy to be in the house of the Lord? We want to give God some praise in this place. God, we bless you. God, we honor you. God, we invite your presence in this place, Father God. God, we welcome you in this place. Father God, we welcome you in this place. Before we do anything, we want to invite your presence into this place, Father God. Saturate this atmosphere with your presence, Father God. God, we adore you. God, we praise you. God, we thank you for getting us here today, Father God. God, we thank you for protecting us. God, we thank you for your hand of protection. God, we bless you. God, there's nobody like you. Somebody just lift up a praise to God in this place. God, we honor you, God. God, there's nobody like you, God. God, thank you, God. God, we welcome you, God. Lord, we welcome you in this place, Father. Father, we welcome you in. We welcome you in, God. We welcome you in. We welcome, we welcome, we welcome, we welcome. We welcome you in. We welcome you in. We welcome you in. you in we welcome you in we welcome you in 
Thank you, God. We welcome you in this place, Father God. Father God, we bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. How many of you know that God is able to do exceedingly and above all that you could ever ask or think? So that means if you can conceive it, he can do beyond it. Hallelujah. He can do beyond what you can conceive in your mind. So whatever your expectations are, he can blow your mind past that. Amen. Hallelujah. God is able to do just what he said he would do, yeah, he's gonna fulfill every promise to you, yeah, yeah, don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you, say he Everybody know that he's able. Let me hear you say he's able. Yes, he is.
a good God. Now, before I introduce our speaker tonight, I want us to celebrate a victory in Floyd. Amen. George Floyd. Amen. We got a victory. Amen. I say we got a victory. Amen. I'm going to celebrate that tonight. I believe God had his hand all in that. Amen. It's time that black lives matter. I said it's time for black lives to matter. Amen. 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 One man's death depletes me. It takes away from me. It doesn't matter what color he is. Amen. It takes away from me. But we celebrate this victory tonight in that of our uh, own George. Well, you could turn that down, please. You know, sometimes I get a little carried away. Uh, you know, I, I turn stuff on and don't even... Don't, not, don't turn it down. You know, you know how that goes. You know, they call it technical difficulty. Amen. But we thank God tonight. Amen. In that celebration in Minnesota. Amen. Um, and, and we're looking for another one. Glory to God. Amen. We're looking for another one. Because I don't know about you. I'm, I'm, I get excited when, when I see victories in our race. Because we have been uh, put down too long. Amen. We've been overlooked. Amen. And uh, when it comes to justice, we've been getting the short end of the stick. But thank God for for protesters and activists and individuals who won't quit. Uh, that's what it takes to win in any victory. It takes tenacity. Amen. And we thank God for that victory uh, tonight. I, I mean, trust me, I don't I don't wish no harm to the, to the gentleman who uh, is getting that time. Amen. Who was uh, found guilty. But, you know, that's what happens when you're guilty. Amen. You should be uh, prosecuted when you're guilty. Somebody say amen. Uh, so if you can if you can prosecute the innocent, surely you can prosecute the guilty. Somebody say amen. Tonight, 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 without further ado, I want to bring this this fire brand. Amen. Amen. This young blazer uh, up here tonight. I, I, I started uh, introducing him Saturday, but he wasn't here, so I have to start over. Amen. I, I watched him uh, in his mother's womb. Amen. I watched his mother carry him, and he was he was a big baby. Uh, she 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 was real pregnant uh, when she, when uh, Sister Jones carried uh, little Virgil, and then I was there. Amen. Uh, when he was born, I lived with them. And he was a little boy. And I used to watch him every night ask his daddy, Siri, Siri, daddy. And, you know, before Siri started, he was saying it. Uh, he, he wasn't saying Siri, yeah. He was saying Siri. He said Siri every night, every night. There was, there was, he would not miss a beat. And he would wake up in the middle of the night, any time. It didn't matter what time it was. He'd wake up, and he'd go to his daddy, and he'd say, Siri. Now, his daddy had to get up, no matter what time it was, to fix him a bowl of Siri. Amen. And, 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 and not only that, and I, and I also watch him be nurtured in the word. Because in order for him to sit to the table to eat the Siri, amen, he had to sit there with his dad and I, who was in Bible studies many times. And, and I watched the word pour into that young man. And, and I knew he had no other choice, amen, but to be branded to preach the word. So before 
uh, I go further, amen, uh, you just play a little melody for me, just play a little melody for me, amen, play a little something, something, amen, just just, just hit the keys, just do something, amen, well, however you feel, however you feel, just stroke them keys, amen, glory to God, you know, because I just, I'm, I love music, I do, I, I, I was raised up in music all my life, now, I don't sing like my son, but I used to sing in the band, amen, I used to be, we used to travel, a traveling band all over the city, amen, they used to think I was going to be another Michael Jackson, but I said, he's going to be me. <laughs> I didn't moonwalk or none of that. You know, I didn't do none of that, you know. <laughs> but we did our thing. Come on, uh, Pastor, Pastor Virgil Jones Jr., come on, take us on to the throne of God. Amen. Amen. Thank God for him. Oh, God bless you. Amen. Come on, somebody, put your hands together and give God one more hand clap of praise. We've already had uh, our songs of worship, and so we are grateful and thankful to be here uh, at the I Am Church. Uh, to my, my big brother, uh, Pastor Mincy, I'm definitely grateful and thankful for uh, the invite. Uh, and being a, a young man growing up in Philippian, you know, you get an opportunity to be around a lot of preachers and a lot of speakers, and I don't even know if he remembered this or not, but I remember being a, a little boy, and this when Bishop Callahan would let people go out and lay hands, and uh, and I looked around and everybody else was touching folk, and you were blowing on them, and I say later, I say now I don't know what that is he got, cause everybody else got to touch him, but this man is blowing on. I'm talking about before Benny Hinn, you know Benny Hinn take the coat off, you know what? I'll catch that next week. But the anointing of God has, has been on his life and it still resides on his life now. And so let's put our hands together and let's thank God for the angel of this house, Pastor Mincy. Amen. Amen. You may have your seats in the presence of the Almighty God. Once again, we're here for revival. And so my prayer uh, is to say something that will hopefully encourage you and inspire you uh, with your walk with Christ uh, exactly where you are now. We thank God also for uh, Anthony Mincy Jr., a singing young man, been singing as far as I can remember. And, and not only sing, but he acts and does all that stuff. All right, if, if you got it, he can do it. And so we, we think, I'm talking about acting, modeling, did I miss something? He, he do it all. Armor bearing, yeah, he, 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 he do it all. He do it all. And so we, we're grateful for him on tonight. Bow your heads with me very briefly, and we're going to dive into the word of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you just for another day that you have made. We thank you for another opportunity to share your word and to worship your name. We thank you for this time of revival uh, that you have placed upon Pastor Mincy's heart. Uh, to bring different ministers in to minister and herald the gospel. We pray, God, that tonight you speak an in-season word that would help your people, that would strengthen your people. We thank you for what's taking place in the earth and what is taking place today. And God, we thank you for what is taking place even in the spiritual realm. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory for the victory, God, that we've already received by faith in Jesus' name. And somebody who believes ought to say, Amen. Amen. Our text tonight is going to be coming from the book of Acts, the book of Acts chapter 28, the book of Acts chapter 28. And the Bible reads that when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Malata. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us, everyone, because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and had laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hanging on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he have escaped the sea, Yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a God. Yeah. I want to minister to you tonight from the simple thought, what do you do when they are waiting for you to die? What do you do 
when they are waiting for you to die. In the book of Acts chapter 28 is recorded of a young man by the name of the Apostle Paul, a man whom God called around Acts chapter 9 on his way to Damascus, making some havoc of the church. Most of us that know the history of the life of the Apostle Paul, you know that he was a chosen vessel before the Lord uh, to bear his name before Gentiles and also to bear his name before kings. It would be this Apostle Paul that you and I would come to the conclusion uh, that when you are called into ministry, that it's not about the glamour, it's not about the fame, it's not about the fortune, not about the money, not about the house, not about the cause. But when Paul began to describe his ministry, uh, he began to describe his ministry by the things that he had suffered. He would you would not know that he was shipwrecked some three times. He was beaten with rods some three times. Uh, spent the night and day in the deep. He began to talk about the trials and the tribulations of being a call minister of God. It would be this apostle Paul that would find out that in order for him to complete the will of God for his life, he could not complete it without trouble. It is a reminder to you and I as believers that trouble to the believer is like a compass or a GPS system in your phone. It will always keep you on track to be in the perfect place that God has designed for your life. This is why you and I as believers, when we come upon trouble in our life, we can continue to praise and worship God in spite of, because according to Romans chapter 8, around 28, it says, for we know that all things work together for good and for them and those that are called according to God's purpose. It will be this Paul that will go through many troubles and we'll find that in Acts chapter 27 leading into Acts chapter 28 that he finds himself in a storm as a prisoner called Eurocle. On. If you go through the backdrop, Paul was trying to convince the sailors not to sail. They didn't listen to the apostle Paul, and thus they find themselves in one of the greatest storms, natural storms, uh, that they had ever been in in their life. They went so many days without seeing sun, moon, or stars. It would be in the midst of this storm that the apostle Paul would talk to his fellow riders and begin to tell them that as long as they abide in the ship, no life would be lost. In the midst of Paul telling them that no life would be lost as long as they abide in the ship, the storm got so bad until it ripped the ship to shreds. Uh, by breaking the ship up, the Bible lets us know that in that Acts 27 leading into Acts 28, that some of the men could swim while others had to come in on broken pieces. Why is this so good, Young Jones? Because there are times in your life and my life that sometimes you make it, but you make it on broken pieces. I, I, I don't need all of my believers out there that's watching. I only need a few of y'all out there that's watching that can amen right here. There were some times you thought you were going to make it to the other side in the whole ship, but you came in on broken pieces. There, there are some times you made it on broken pieces, but may I submit to you not to waste energy on the fact that you made it on broken pieces, but to put your praise on the fact that you made it. Oh, I only need a few of y'all in here to say, I may have made it on broken pieces, but baby, I still made it. This apostle Paul that will make it on broken pieces in Acts chapter 28, you know the truth of the teaching, they will land upon an island. And upon this island, as they would escape the sea, uh, they run into some barbarous people. And the Bible lets us know that the barbarous people were kind unto the apostle Paul and his comrades. It is here that as they find themselves upon this island, that the apostle Paul begins to kindle a fire because of the present rain and the present cold. Now understand that Paul is in a predicament here because he's just just escaped the sea only to land on the island to think that he has made it into safe territory. Have you ever been to a place in your life where you say, I've already been through enough hell. I've already been through enough trouble. There is no way in the world another thing could go wrong. God, you done already put enough on my plate. I, I can't take another bone. I can't take another dish. I can't take another piece of bread. I got so much trouble all around me until I cannot take anything else. I promise I'm going to preach after a while. Ah, but we have to understand that there are times in your life and my life that God will get you to the place that where you will not think that we can't take anymore, and then God will do what? He'll give you some more. Oh, you say, I got too much trouble on my life, and God say, I'll let something else go wrong. Why in the world, young preacher, would God allow something else to go wrong when I feel that there is already too much on my plate? Because God has to bring you and I to the place that where we understand it was never about your strength anyway. Y'all forgive me here, because most of the time when we begin to gauge how much trouble we can handle, we are gauging our trouble based on our own strength. But when you walk with God on the inside of you, it was never about how smart you were. It was never about your strength. You ought to tell somebody it was always about the strength of God in your life. 
Oh, that's why the Apostle Paul, he finds himself now in the place where now he's building a fire. He's killing a fire because of the present rain and the present coal. Now, the Bible says that in Acts chapter, chapter 28, verse 3, that as Paul began to gather uh, the bundle of sticks together, and he began to lay them on the fire, that a viper comes out of the heat, and he fastens on the Apostle Paul's hand. Don't miss this here. We find in verse number 3, naturally speaking, even though Paul had escaped the sea, he lands on an island. But one thing that Paul would never do, Paul would never stop working. Now, y'all forgive me here, uh, because we live in a day and time where the church itself will begin to condemn you when God has already saved you. That's why I tell folk, I don't care what them church folks say. I don't care what their opinion is about you. Whatever you do, don't you stop building. Don't you know it is a trick of the enemy to make you feel so less than that you stop doing what God has called you to do? I told them, come hell or high water, I'm going to preach. I don't care if you like me. I don't care if you co-sign on me. If God has called you to preach, then baby, you better preach. If God has called you to sing, then baby, you better sing more than ever God has called you to do. You got to make sure that you keep doing it. And so Paul has escaped the sea, but the boy has a mind to build. So he begins to gather the bundle of six together, and he begins to build uh, the fire. Now, while Paul is building the fire, the Bible said that now that a viper comes out of the heat, and he begins to fasten uh, on his hand. Don't miss this here. The devil ain't even attracted to you if you're too cold. Uh, don't Listen, th there are two people that's not attracted to you when you're cold. That's God and the devil. He told him in Revelation, he said, if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. And so whenever you're active in the body of Christ, you got to understand that real heat will draw some snakes in your life. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. Oh, there's some of you looking at me right now. You got some snake activity in your life. Could it be because, baby, your behind is on fire? Look at somebody and shout, I just might be on fire. And so the Apostle Paul, he continues to build. He just escaped the sea, but he would not allow what he went through in Acts 27 to stop him from building in Acts 28. As he begins to build, as he begins to catch on fire, the Bible says that the heat draws the viper, and the viper fastens on the Apostle Paul's hand. Don't miss this here. You got to understand, and I must understand, that just because you're building, every now and then God will let the devil bite you. Oh, I feel like talking in here. Every now and then, he'll do you and I like he did Job. He'll remove that hedge and let the enemy in just to see if you're going to make it or not. I got good news for you that anytime the enemy is allowed to strike you or to bite you in your life, it's only because God already knows that you have what it takes to survive what the devil has put on you. Oh, how do you know this preacher? Y'all don't mind me deviating here for a minute. I only need a few minutes here. When you go back to the book of Job, you understand now that the devil never asked for Job. He didn't go to the throne of God and say, you know what? I want that one. Oh, but one day when God was meeting with the sons, with his sons, uh, it says that the enemy shows up and God began to talk to the enemy and ask him, where have you been? He said, I've been to and fro here and there doing just what I do. He said, have you considered uh, my servant Job? Uh, preach like you feel, bald-headed preacher. Sometimes you ain't done nothing wrong. Uh, you're behind just been recommended. Uh, oh, I wish I had somebody in here that know that every now and then when something goes wrong in your life, uh, it's because God done put his heavenly money on you. Oh, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, God is betting on you. If God was in Vegas, he put the money on your name. He said, I bet this one will come out. I bet this one will survive. I bet this one will keep their pain. All I need only a few minutes here. I promise I'm going to be out of your way. And so the apostle Paul, uh, he's allowed to be bitten by the snake. Uh, and the Bible said that the snake, the message here, that, that he fastened on the Apostle Paul's head. Uh, now the Bible said that when the barbarian people saw this, uh, they understood uh, the venomous beast that was hanging on his hand. And they said within themselves, no doubt that this man is a murderer. And though he has escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffered him not to live. Don't miss this here. Every now and then the devil will bite you and God will let somebody see it. Oh, you got, got to have folk around you that see what you go through. They'll know your business. You ain't tell them. They just know. Oh, I've seen the devil bite you. And it's just like folk uh, that will see you get bit by the enemy that are sit back and wait for you to die. Do me a favor here and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what do you do when they are waiting for you to die? 
And so the apostle Paul, he finds himself in a place where now people around him have seen what he's been bitten by. They know that this is a venomous beast and they begin to judge the apostle Paul. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't let the judging stop you. Oh, as long as we live, folk don't be folk. As long as you live, people gonna have an opinion about you. As long as you live, they're gonna talk in your face and stab you in your back. And so just in that instance, they had begun to judge the apostle Paul. They had already said, this man got to be a murderer. He done done something wrong. That's why I tell folk, don't lose sleep over folk that's judging you. Because the same measure that they measure out will be the same measure that comes back to them. So the Bible lets us know now that the Bible, uh, that they see the beast. They see the beast fasten himself upon the apostle Paul. And they say, no doubt that this man is a murderer whom though he escaped the sea, a vengeance suffered him not to live. Now verse number five is what I want to get to very quickly here. And I promise I'm going to try to preach my way out of here. Uh, the apostle Paul, uh, he has this snake still on his hand. Don't miss the text here. Uh, from the time that the snake fastened himself upon the apostle Paul in verse number three, he's still on the apostle Paul's hand in verse number four. Five. Now don't miss this here. Now you got to understand, Paul doesn't go into prayer. He doesn't have enough time to go into fasting. God doesn't send an angel and take the snake off the apostle Paul's hand. Oh no, but I believe that God had put in Paul what Paul had already needed. In other words, there are times in your life, in my life, that when you get tired of the snake, you got enough power to shake it off. You don't need no prayer cloth. You don't need to stand in no prophet line. You don't need nobody to look at you and tell you what your address is. God said through the spirit of God that's on the inside of you, you got enough power to shake some stuff off. May I submit to you that there are some things in our life that God said, I've already given you power to shake it off. Look at somebody shout, if I was you, I'd shake it off. I only need a few minutes here and I promise you, I'll be waiting. And so now they're waiting, they're waiting for the apostle Paul to die. And now the apostle Paul, the verse 5, it says that he shook the beast off into the fire uh, and he felt no harm. Uh, now the Bible says in verse number 6, how be it? Uh, they look when he should have swollen and fallen dead uh, suddenly. Uh, but after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a God. Uh, now don't miss this here uh, because there are some of you in here, uh, you don't understand the power of God that's operating in your life. Don't miss is here. God wouldn't give you power uh, to shake the snake off uh, and wouldn't heal you of the venom that he released in your life. Uh, don't miss this here. In order for Paul, he can't just snake the snake off. Uh, it was a venomous beast. Uh, that means the venom that the snake released, uh, God had to heal the venom. Uh, do me a favor and tell somebody, you ain't got enough power just to shake the snake off, uh, but the venom that the devil released in your life, uh, he released in your mind, uh, he released in your family. God said you got enough power to shake this thing off. Hold on, verse number six. I'm almost ready. You about ready? I'm about ready to ride now. Since I done done enough teaching, I'm about ready to preach myself on out of here. Um, the Bible says, um, verse number six is how be it when they had looked at her, uh, what he should have swollen. Of falling down dead suddenly. Uh, the after they had looked a great while, they saw no harm come to him, and they changed their minds and said uh, that he was a God. And when I first started preaching, I told you, what do you do when they are waiting for you to die? Oh, in verse number six, it lets us know that the barbarous people were sitting there literally waiting uh, for the apostle Paul to die. They looked and they said, well, he should have swollen or uh, fallen down dead. Our uh, church folk don't know when to shout, uh, but if you're watching me not live, you're behind by the shout right now. Uh, because there's some of y'all that should have been dead, but you're still here. Our oh, Paul should have been swollen. He should have died. But anybody know what the devil meant for bad? What the God will turn it into good? What the devil thought was going to kill you? God said, I'm going to use it to make you stronger. Is there anybody here that can testify like the Apostle Paul that when you should have swollen and fallen dead, God still let you live. He still kept you in your right mind. He still kept you with the right praise. And so as they begin to look at the Apostle Paul, they're waiting for Paul to form dead. Oh, look at your name and say, neighbor, when they're waiting for you to die, you got to keep on living. You know, the Bible declares that as they begin to look at Paul a great while, as they begin, they begin to change their mind. Oh, that's why you don't worry about the haters. You don't worry about the lies. You don't worry about the knives in your back. But as God said, there's so much oil on your life, you're going to change their mind. They used to say this about you. Now they got to change how they talked about your name because of the oil that was 
on your life. They begin to change their minds about the Apostle Paul. Not for the sake of time, but I got to get out of here. But not for the sake of time. I want to try to finish the text here. Of the Bible lets us know that while Paul was on that same island, that there was a man by the name of Publius that was sick with a fever. And they called the Apostle Paul. And the same Apostle Paul that they were waiting to die. The same Apostle Paul that was bit by the snake. The same Apostle Paul that they said was a murderer. Was the same Apostle Paul that took his hand and laid his hand on the sick. And the sick had to recover. I've come to encourage somebody that when they're waiting for you to die, you got to keep on doing ministry. When they're waiting for you to die, you got to keep on laying hands and waiting for the sick to recover. When they're waiting for you to die, you got to keep on prophesying. When they're waiting for you to die, you got to keep on preaching. When they're waiting for you to die, you got to keep on singing. When they're waiting for you to die, you got to keep on pressing. When they're waiting for you to die, give them something to see. Not the Bible that comes. That Paul lays on the man of the name of Publius. Now I like to believe in my sanctified mind that Paul took the same hand that the snake did. And he used that same hand and laid hand on the sick. And the sick recovered. So Trump don't know when to shout. Trump will let you know when to shout. You want to shout now. But at the same place that the devil bit you will be the same place that God will anoint you. The same place that the devil shook you will be the same place that God will use you. So if they're waiting for you to die, let them wait. Let them look. Get them something. Keep on worshiping. Keep on praising. Keep on living. God's got your back. God's got your past. God's got your present. God's got your future. If you believe, you ought to shout yes. You ought to shout yes. You ought to shout yes. Y'all come on to have your seats here. Y'all gonna make them preach my way out of here. And so the Apostle Paul, he gives them something to see. We find ourselves here in the year of 2021 that the enemy has been allowed to bite the church. When we look at the body of Christ as a whole, we see different things here and different things there. And it seems as though we can't seem to find our footing. But I believe it's by design. Nothing happens without the knowledge of God. And even though the enemy seemingly has been allowed to fasten on the church, maybe even release venom in certain areas, I believe that this will be the ticket that God is going to use to show the anointing that is on the body of Christ. Notice if Paul never gets bit, the people never see the God that's in Paul. And so there's a certain revelation that's in your bite. Not just a revelation for you, but for the revelation for people that's watching you. Because they know you shouldn't have made it. What does it do to an unbeliever that knows you shouldn't have made it? What does it do to an onlooker that knows you should be dead and gone and all of a sudden you're still here? And so I believe that the snake bite in Acts 28 and the snake bite that we experience even now that is going to be used for the glory of God. I want to say this to y'all, I'm going to downshift and I'm going to pray for you. I'm not doing the text justice, but I'm going to do it the best that I can. As you continue to read, the Bible lets us know that as Paul began to pray for this man by the name of Publius, I believe that's his name, maybe pronouncing it wrong. But this man had a ship of Alexandria. Now when you get to the beginning of Acts 28, they get to the island because their ship was destroyed in the sea. And so the only way they can make it off of this island, they need a ship. The very man, preach like you feel, bald-headed preacher. The very man that Paul prayed for will be the man that's got the next ship. That, that's why I like to believe that God tried to tell us, don't chase it, just chase the kingdom. Because sometimes the blessing is in we and us doing the will of God. You, you, don't, you might pray for somebody to get a breakthrough and the person that's got the breakthrough got the money. The person that's got the breakthrough got your connection. If you go for the connection, you're going to miss it. But if you pray for the breakthrough, you're going to get everything that God has promised you. So the apostle Paul, he prays for this man. 
once again doing ministry. And as he prays for this man, this man gives him a ship. You go back and read the text. I believe it's in the beginning of Acts 27. It's the bottom of Acts 28, and I'm going to pray for you. Because for some of you, it's going to be a season of restoration. Some of the stuff that you've lost in the storm and you've lost with the snake bite, God is getting ready to restore your life. The Bible says that in that Acts 27, that the ship that was destroyed in the storm called Eurachlodon was a ship of Alexandria. Isn't it amazing that the man, the ship that the man gives Paul is another ship of Alexandria? And so the ship they lost in the storm was an Alexandria ship. And the ship that was given to Paul was an Alexandria ship. What do you see in the text, young preacher? That God restores what we lose. Some of you, you lost some things. America didn't just go through a loss. You went through a loss. But I want to prophetically declare in your life, get ready for restoration. And I love the God we serve because when God gives you what you lost, he gives you more than what you lost. So I need you to prepare your heart and prepare your mind. Your season of restoration is here. Everything that you thought that you lost, God said, I'm going to give it back to you. And I'm going to give it back to you with interest. That there was a woman in the book of Kings. Uh, she had to leave her land behind. I'm going to let the Holy Ghost tell me, Pastor Messi told me to be myself. So I'm going to let the Holy Spirit tell me over here into this restoration. And they say that this woman had to leave her land for seven years because there was a famine. And at the end of seven years, she comes back to plead to the king for her land. I don't have enough time to go through the whole text. But the lady had a son that was a miracle baby. And the king sitting in his king's seat was talking to the servant that was a servant to the prophet. And he was telling the servant, tell me more about this prophet. And the servant begins to tell the king about a boy that was raised from the dead. As the servant is telling the king about the boy that is raised from the dead, here comes this woman that has missed her land for seven years. Not only is the woman walking in, but the baby, the miracle baby that the servant is talking to the king about is walking in with the woman. And as the woman begins to talk to the king, the king say, I don't want you just to give her her land back. This is prophetic. He said, but I want you to restore everything that she's lost for the past seven years. You thought you were missing it. God said, no, I was just holding it for you, baby. God said, I was holding on to it. Bring you to a blessing this day. So there's some of you, you've been in the famine for years. You feel like you've been losing for years. God told me to tell you, you better get ready. Your season of restoration is now. Y'all come on, put your hands together and give God one more hand clap of praise. I pray that something has been said tonight that has encouraged you and that has encouraged you and that has blessed you and inspired you. I wanted to pray, I want to pray for you very briefly here. So right there where you are, you don't have to close your eyes, but I do want you to bow your head with me if you can as we go before the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the visionary of this revival. We thank you for the spirit of revival. We thank you for Kaya bringing us back to life. We believe, God, that this word has fallen on good ground, that it has encouraged and inspired your people. Help us to be mindful that God even in the snake bite your God. Help us to be mindful that sometimes God we're going through things because we are still building. We're still active. And then God help us to know that anytime you allow the enemy to bite us and fasten you have also given us the ability to shake it off. Not just the snake bite but God you've given us power to be healed from the venom of the enemy. What do we do, God, when they're waiting for us to die? We got to keep on living. We got to keep on pushing. We got to keep on pressing. We got to keep on doing the very thing that you have called us to do. So many people have left their first love. So many people have left their calling. They've left the will that you've ordained for their life because folk have been waiting on them to die. They've allowed the opinions of others to rob them of their gift. God, we speak, decree, and declare that the devil is a liar, and they are true. Just like the Apostle Paul, we will build. Just like the Apostle Paul, we will walk in our calling. And God, when we begin to walk in this calling, everything that we think that we've lost, it will be restored to our life. 
Now, God, we pray for this great pastor, Pastor Anthony Mincy. Continue to use him. Continue to build him. Been on the battlefield, God, since before I was born. We thank you, God, for his stability. We thank you that he's still here heralding the word of God. We pray for this great church that you would send the people. Send him the sheep with the ears to hear and a heart to follow. We bind the hand of the enemy. They will come to steal, kill, and to destroy. For God, the devil is a liar. In this place and in this ministry, your name will continue to reign true. And we'll be ever so careful to give you praise, to give you honor, and to give you glory. And then, Father, before we close, there may be somebody listening that don't know you as their Savior. There may be somebody watching that needs spiritual restoration. You said in your word that you were married to the backslider. You told us, God, through the sayings of Christ, that you'll leave the 99 and go and get the one. We thank you for grace. We thank you for mercy. Right now, we pray for spiritual restoration for those that have gotten away from you. And then, God, we also pray for salvation. You said, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made. And so, God, right now, we speak that we believe in our heart of the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe that he died for our sin. We believe, God, that he was dead, but on the third day rose with all power in his hand. We believe in the risen Savior. We accept the risen Savior as our Lord and our Savior. Right now, God, fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit. Like it says in Psalms 23, God, let our cup, let it run over. And we'll be ever so careful to give you praise, to give you honor, and to give you glory. In Jesus' name, and somebody ought to say, amen. Come on, Zion, put those hands together one more time. And give your God a hand clap of praise. I'm going to turn it back over to Pastor Mincy. So y'all come on, put your hands together for him, the visionaire. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. Give God some praise. Give him the glory. Thank God for that bald head preacher preaching. Amen. Preaching like he lost his mind. Thank God for the fire. That's proof of the fire. What we saw displayed in here tonight, the power of God moving. But I don't want to ride out with him on his message. But I would like to say this. If you follow the life of the Apostle Paul, this man was stoned to death. He had gone through quite few dangers. And I just want to say this because this is what I heard. This is what I heard. God would save you to save somebody else. Let me say that one more time. God spared that man's life, not for him, but he spared his life for that other man who he laid his hands on. That man would have died had Paul not lived. So God will let you live to save somebody else. So we need to be grateful of the fact that I'm not saved for me. What God does for me is not for me. It's for somebody else. Thank God again for the man of God. Let's let's do something. Let's do something. Let's do. Come on. Come on. Get the get, open that up, please. Amen. Let's sow into this this revival. If you don't sow into this, what by God something wrong with you? Glory to God. We need to sow into this revival. What? Good God Almighty. Don't you ever come back here no more. That man make it hard for me to preach. Lord, have mercy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. And, and thank Bishop Prelate uh, Virgil Jones Sr. Uh, amen. Uh, my bishop uh, for allowing you to come. Amen. For releasing you to come because we this revival is going on all year long amen this is this I, I don't see no end to it amen that they can if if god could send fire in brownsville if he could send it in azusa amen he could send it in jacksonville and i'm and i and i and i have the faith to believe that we then started something in jacksonville amen a lot of people's lives are going to be spared because of our obedience see paul if he wasn't obedient 
to go on the voyage. Remember, the, 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 the prophet then prophesied to him and told him, now, whoever wear this girdle, <laughs> you in trouble. Paul said, I, am I not worth <laughs> I put this thing on. So you ought to be bad enough to say, it don't matter what I got to go through, I'm, a, I'm going through it for the kingdom of God because there's an outcome, amen, for what God is allowing us to go through. Amen. Let's be a blessing tonight. Amen. And and, and Saturday, Saturday, 3 o'clock, 3 o'clock, I got a, a young man coming from Valdosta, Georgia. Amen. Amen. We got him coming from everywhere, amen, to be a part of this great revival. Just pray for us. Pray for us that, that God would send others, amen, uh, that would be, that would keep the fire burning. I, I remember when I was a, a member of the cathedral in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, amen, the late uh, Bishop Earl Park, the Archbishop Earl Park, amen, under him, amen, and I remember that we, we had what we call fire brands. The young, the young folk was the fire brands. They was the one who kept the fire going. You know, fire brands that come up from the fire. You, you ever see them? They, see what they do? See what fire brands do? They come up out the fire, and before you know it, the whole forest burning. And I see, I see the world burning. I see the world burning. I see it. I see it. I prophetically see it that God is setting this whole world on fire with the Holy Ghost. And I'm excited to be a part of what God is doing because let me tell you something. Your great days are ahead of you. Your great days are ahead of you. Your worst are behind you, but your greater days are ahead of you. This young man came in here, and he don't know, but I but I asked God something. Ooh. And he prophesied. He don't know. He said it. Glory to God. You don't have no idea what God is getting ready to do in your life. That's the presence. That's the presence. Glory. My Shana. Glory. See, that's the confirmation. What you're seeing right now, that's the confirmation of the heart of God that what God is about to do in the lives of his people. Let me tell you something. If, if, there, if there's ever been a time in your life that is not a time to faint, this is it. This is it. We're in that, we're in that no faint zone. This is not a time to fall, fall out. This is not a time to fall back. This is a time to embrace and move forward. Because I say this, I say this as a prophet of God. I say this and I hear the Holy Spirit talking tonight. I say this. Many have fallen away. And he said, watch this. He said, thou, if you put your hand to the plow and look back, you're not worthy. This is not the time to look back. This is not the time to stop working. That, that's, that was the word. This is not the time to stop working. Paul was working even in danger. Keep working. Thank you, son. Keep working. Keep on working. Somebody said keep working. Amen. I'm going to sow my seed. Amen. I got to sow a seed after going through all of what I just went through. <laughs> I got to sow into that myself. Glory to God. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Your obedience. Amen. I think I saw a gift that I received. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sow where you want to go. That's how you sow. Sow where you want to go. Whatever that, that is, that lifestyle you want, you want that, that lifestyle, so into it. Amen. Come on, you can bring your gifts. Amen. Don't let the camera stop you. This real life, what we do around here. Amen. We don't, we don't, we don't take no station identification. It is real. We let the, hey, baby, let the people see you on camera. Look at, look what that baby did. 
Look at this. She, she saw that cross up there, and Samaria drew that cross that's on the wall. She said, that is pink, and she sat back there and drew. Hey, baby, you drew one too? What you got? Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Y'all see these babies? Y'all see them live on, on Facebook and Instagram? All y'all. Y'all see these babies? They sitting in church, and they got their mind on Jesus. The power is in the cross. And they young, they love, let me tell you something. When service over, they go into the altar. They would not leave this church without going to the altar. Now these are babies. And we ought to learn from these babies. They've been somebody. Because it's time to pray. If there's ever been a time for us to pray, we're in that time right now. Because what what helped Paul was he was a praying man. <laughs> yeah, amen. That, he, he it helped him through by being a praying man. Thank you, Pastor. Again, thank you, thank you. I, 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 I'm honored. I'm honored uh, that you're here, and I was honored when you said you was you would come. Amen. Uh, amen. You set the president. You set the president. We've had some great, great preaching, great preaching. Woman on Saturday, woman of God from Tallahassee, Florida. Amen. Uh, Pastor Annie Bird told uh, the uh, I, I told her, girl, don't you ever do that no more. You get now. We got to go rebuild. <laughs> told the house down. Amen. Amen. Her and Valika from Valdosta, Valdosta, uh, Georgia. Valika uh, set it up. And Pastor Bird came up here with that uh, Louis Vuitton fur hat and tore this place down. <laughs> she had to preach with that Louis Vuitton hat on. <laughs> amen. So, so without any further ado, amen. We're gonna let uh, Pastor come and close us, amen, with benediction, amen. And and just stay tuned, amen. Facebook, amen, and YouTube, y'all stay tuned to what God. Amen. It's not about to do, but what God is doing. Amen. 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 Thank you again, Pastor Mensa and the I Am Church. All hearts and minds are clear. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard. We thank you for your grace and mercy that is bestowed upon our lives. Now, God, as we prepare to close this service and some prepare to leave this place, we pray, God, that your presence would go with us. We thank you. We give you praise until the time that we come back and the appointed time that we come back again. Thank you. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before his presence and before his glory. Our glory, majesty, dominion, and power, forth now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, and somebody ought to say, amen. All right, God bless y'all. Amen. We hope you were blessed by the worship experience at the I Am Church. Make sure you share this word with your loved ones. Remember, there are three ways you can give. Number one is website giving. Open up your web browser and type in www.tiacjax.org and click on the Giving tab. Number two is giving through Cash App. Open up the Cash App on your Android or iOS device and enter your amount you like to send and search the I am church and click send and you will get a confirmation number three is using the Giblify app on your Android or iOS device thanks for watching and we hope you are blessed and please subscribe to our YouTube channel at TIAC Jax and like us on Facebook and Instagram and for those who just gave their life to Christ please visit TIACJax.org backslash salvation and fill out the contact Form. Thanks for watching and have a blessed week.